What is up, you guys? Welcome back to the Heat Report. And man, I am super, super mad. Like, I, what we witnessed last night was an absolute shambles in the fourth quarter. I, I had to record a video because it was absolutely unacceptable what happened last night. There is no way that we should have lost that game against the Hornets. Um, I said that if something, you know, drastic happened. I'd, I'd, I'd put out a video and this to me is drastic that there's no way we should have lost that game we were up going into the fourth if i'm not mistaken we were up at halftime too right i think i'm pretty sure we were up at halftime we were up going to the fourth that fourth quarter we just collapsed we just collapsed man what is going on with the heat something is something is not right and i know a lot of people are saying you know we our guys just came back and um they needed they need some time to settle in and all and, and this that and the other but we don't have this time like I, I, I don't think people understand that this is a shortened season there's only 72 games we're 20 games in and we're sitting at 7 and 13 now that's 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 literally less than a fourth or more than a fourth of the season that has been gone right so I mean I, I I'm not I'm not really sure like how much longer we can wait until we start racking up some wins. I thought this was a must win. It was against a sub 500 team in the Eastern Conference who did not have you know their their second best player, if their their best yeah their second best player. If you if you ask a lot of people, Terry Rozier is is the Hornets' second best player, depending on who you ask. I think he is. They didn't have him. We were we always let some random guy um torches in these games no disrespect to malik monk but he hasn't been doing anything this season we let him drop 36 we shut down Lamelo. we shut down gordon hayward but malik monk killed us like malik monk in all us in all honesty i believe that is because he's playing as bam and bam went to kentucky and he went to kentucky at the same time same thing that happened with De'Aaron fox i don't know i don't know what's going on with these dudes how they're always balling against us. Some of the shots he was hitting, he was he was hitting were were tough. They were tough shots. I'm not, not gonna lie, they were tough shots. But the last play, bro, the last defensive play, I don't know, I don't know what we were thinking. I knew, the whole world knew. I'm sure you guys knew. If the fans in the stadium didn't know, and if the players didn't know, then there's something wrong. That the last shot was going to Malik Monk. You had to know that. The dude was on fire. He had 33, or he had 30, or, or something. Like he had, he had like 20, he was he, he had like 30 something until that point. He finished with 36, but until that point, he was going off. That last shot, we gave him a clean look at an open three. It wasn't a wide open because we did have a bam. I think was trying to contest, but it was a clean look. I think Bam could have done a much better job contesting that shot. I don't know. Yeah, in my opinion, I might be, I might be being harsh. But I think that Bam could have been. Um, I think I think Bam could have con uh, contested it better because you know that that look was very clean. That look was very clean. So, um, yeah, I mean, that and that last play, that offensive play before overtime, like what was that? Can someone please tell me what this what the thinking was, what the strategy was, going for that? Like I have no clue what we were trying to accomplish with that last play we we were okay they hit the three 17 seconds or 16 seconds one of the two still plenty of time left on the shot clock on, uh, yeah on the shot clock slash game clock and we're running down mind you we have two timeouts by the way we have two timeouts i don't know if a lot of people caught that we had two timeouts okay jimmy butler slowly dribbles it out dribbles it out it comes to four seconds i'm like what are we doing like no one set any screens uh, is he driving to the basket like wh wh what's going on he takes a side step or like not side, side step step back three rattles out then equal dollars tip in is too late i don't know what that shot was and i think you have to you have to put some blame on jimmy butler for that last shot he declined to speak to the media i'm pretty sure he's pissed i would be too but like that last shot, like I don't know what that was. We've seen in the finals, in the playoffs, when we need a bucket, Jimmy Butler's our guy, and what he does 90% of the time is drive to the lane and either draw a foul or get a bucket. I don't know why he didn't do that in that situation because the Charlotte Hornets don't really have any significant rim protector. The baseline 
um, the whole left side was wide open. He could have gone to the left side. It's not like Gordon Hayward is. It's not like Gordon Hayward is Kawhi Leonard. Like he's not. He's a. He's a. He's an okay defender, but he's not a guy that can stop Jimmy Butler. Especially when you were like, "Give me the ball, give me the ball." We we saw you say that, and I was really happy when you did. But that last shot was unacceptable. And then after that, the Hornets kept putting Tyler Hero in, in pick and rolls and tried to try, kept trying to get switches on him. And in in the overtime, it, they just they just kept going at him. Tyler Hero was being gone at, whether it was Gordon Hayward bullying him to the layup. Devontae Graham take, taking some step back threes and those step back threes I don't really care about like if they they're tough shots like if they go in you just tip your hat to them because Devontae Graham hit some tough shots at the end but Gordon Hayward was just bullying Tyler Hero at the end to the lane so I don't know why we I don't know why he was in the game Tyler Hero I, I have no clue he was he was not doing anything he was he was not making anything on offense he was not contributing defensively as I just said and then what makes it worse is today he just he was posting on his Instagram talking about his new cereal. Like, bro, like we're we're seven and thirteen right now. Like, I don't know if you we realize that. Like, some of these dudes needs to wake up. These these dudes need to wake up. Maybe I'm overreacting because I know it's we're only twenty games in. But man, my message to any of the Heat players, if any member associated with the Miami Heat is watching this video. People are calling you guys a fluke across Twitter, Instagram, every social media outlet, ESPN. People are calling y'all a fluke, okay? Are y'all going to just succumb to that? What are y'all going to do about it? I even saw Bam on his live saying that, you know, we, we don't like people calling us a fluke. We want to we, we use it as motivation. Um, we're not seeing any of that right now. Bam is talking about how he's going to be aggressive every game. I didn't see that. He's, he's, he's sort of taking a back seat. We want to see Bam play aggressively. I know he had 23 points, but let's be honest, man. Like, he wasn't, he, he, he wasn't, that was not his greatest game. I don't really care what the box score says. You can see the game. He didn't have as much of an impact as he had in some of the other games recently. And then that defense was terrible. Like I said, Tyler Hero being gone at, right? Why is Kendrick Nunn not playing? Can someone please tell me why Kendrick Nunn is not getting minutes? Because we can clearly see that Goran Dragic and Avery Bradley. I can understand why Avery Bradley's on the court because of his defense, I guess. But he wasn't really. I don't. I don't think we even put him on Monk at the end. Um, and Dragic was just not up to it. And those two, I'm not too worried about because they were just coming off of some injuries. So I think they'll. I think they'll be fine. But for that particular game, I'd like to see Kendrick Nunn play because he was playing really well. I know the last game before this, I was like, okay, he didn't play because of his COVID test. But this game, like, come on, man. Like, he, he, he's he been our... Last week, he was our best player, Kendrick Nunn. He, 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 was, a, he was a very bright spot for us um, against, you know, the, the Pistons, the Raptors. They... He played really well against them. And I don't know why he's not getting minutes. And I keep addressing this. I'm going to keep saying this until I can't speak anymore. We have too much depth. And I think that's a problem. And before you guys like say, what's this guy talking about? Let me, exp let me explain you why this is a problem. When we get a fully healthy roster, there's going to be guys that don't get minutes. But those guys that don't get minutes are not scrubs. They're really good. Kendrick Nunn is a really good player. You don't, you just don't get runner up for rookie of the year by being a fluke. When he's given the opportunity, he does well, Kendrick Nunn. So I don't know why he's not playing. KZ didn't get any minutes. Myers Leonard, when he comes back, probably he's not going to be in the rotation because we have our, you know, backup, I guess, um, front court with Iguodala and Achua, uh, Struess at the three, Dragic and Bradley at the one and two. Um, Chris Silva and Mo Harkless are still injured, and uh, Chris Silva might be a stretch. I don't think you know he's he's yeah he, he's not that great of a player yet, but Mo Harkless is a solid dude, and he's been coming into his own. He hit some he hit some shots against the Nets before he got injured. Um, a lot of these guys are that are on our bench that are not getting minutes are are quality players, which is why we if we're not gonna use them, we have to we have to move them on for people that we're gonna be using. Uh, Bradley Beal doesn't want to be traded, by the way. So for those of you hoping that we can get Beal, it's not going to happen. He he doesn't want to be traded. You can't satisfy everyone. If Beal doesn't want to be traded, then we just have to move on from him. 
I I I, I would have loved Bill in Miami, but he clearly doesn't want to. He clearly wants to be in Washington. He signed the extension before, so I don't know why everyone's saying free Bill. Like he signed the extension for a reason, and even now he's saying he doesn't want to be traded. So that's dead. We're not gonna get Bradley Beal. So please don't get your hopes up about that. Victor Oladipo is a possibility. I read somewhere today that his um there was like a deadline or not a deadline, but there was like a restriction, a date restriction as to when we could trade for him. I think that restriction closed today, so we are as of now eligible to trade for Victor Oladipo. If I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. Him, him, he's available. I'd love him in Miami. The thing with him is that do you want to risk giving up assets for him where where, where we can just get him in free agency? Um, let me know down in the comments below because I don't know if it's for sure that he's going to come to us in free agency because I, I definitely know he wants Miami, but, you know, things could change. He might change his mind. If he, Houston's been doing pretty well recently. So if he likes Houston, he might stay in Houston. So is it worth the risk giving up, you know, some assets to get him back when he's a free agent this year? I, I'm, I'm, I'll guarantee you guys this: if he's a free agent this year, and if if we if we trade for him, he's gonna stay on our team long term. There's no way he's gonna leave us in free agency because he wants to be here anyway. Um, so do you want to lock him up for now, but give some assets back, or do you want to hold the risk of losing him out to another team in free agency? PJ Tucker is a guy that I'd love. A lot of people wouldn't because he's 30 seven i guess how old is P pj tucker th either 35 or 37 if i'm not mistaken and he's a bit undersized but i think it fit the power forward position perfectly like he's one of the guys that who are not on the heat and who have not played for the heat around the league that i look at and i'm like oh he fits our culture he, he does fit our culture he's a leader too a vocal leader locker room leader three nd player can guard five positions we saw that the rockets played him at the center spot last year um he did he actually did well against anthony davis if, if please look up the stats anthony davis being guarded by pj tucker because pj tucker held him to some pretty bad shooting splits so pj tucker is still a solid player i just don't know how long until he declines um but yeah we definitely have to fix that power forward position because again today i told you guys spolster was not done with fixing the rotations because kelly olenek slid into that starting lineup the problem with kelly is that you know he was hitting some threes at the beginning but then he just, just stopped he's a little he's, he's a bit inconsistent for the three-point range his defense is terrible though I, I i can't i can't like we we have three defensive liabilities um on the, on the floor with kelly duncan and tyler and teams are just going at us and even bam said we have to tighten up our defense it's, it's kind of hard where only only two of the players in your starting lineup can defend it's, it's kind of tough like i don't care who i don't care what team you are all the elite teams have at least you know three three at least three defenders on their in their starting lineup we don't we have two right which is why kelly olenic either he has to you know be flipped he has to be moved for a power forward that can defend but also can stretch the floor or Tyler Hero has to come off the bench or Duncan Robinson has to come off the bench because we can't I don't think Tyler Hero is a point guard I don't think I think that experiment should be done we're forcing we're forcing this kid to play a role that he's not accustomed to he was never a point guard in college he was never a point guard I don't think he was a he might have been a point guard in high school I'm not sure he wasn't a point guard last year I don't think he is a point guard I still think he has some work to do. He get he still gets ripped up with this handle. I think we have to ease him into that position. We, I mean, throwing him into the fire, especially when we're at the 13th seed. I don't know if that's the right solution. Him and Duncan, I think one of them has to come off the bench. One of them has to start at the two, and one of them has to come off the bench. I think Spolster's thinking is that Tyler has shown a lot in his rookie of the year that we want to trust him and play him at the point guard position because he's too valuable to drop to the bench. But there are just some players who like they're they're not built to play that play at certain position. Tyler Hero, in my opinion, doesn't look like a point guard. Maybe that'll change. Hopefully, it it does change because I do want to see him on the floor. Um, I do want to see him on the floor. Right, and it's a win-win for us because you know if you if Tyler plays well, right. I'm not saying we have to trade Tyler, but if teams if if we if we want you know a star, Tyler is going to be the first piece that they ask for. I know Jimmy and we're not trading Jimmy or Bam, so Tyler is going to be the first piece that they ask for. So, you know, if he plays well, it's a win-win for us because he's he's either you know playing well, which is going to help us get wins, 
or, or if he's gonna if he's gonna get traded, he's gonna his trade value is gonna be increased if he if he keep if he if he starts playing well again. So we just needed him to play well because it's a win win for the fans, um, for the for the for the for the, for the team. And I'm not saying we have to trade Tyler, but like I said, if we're if we're trying to trade for a star, like a Zach Levine or someone like that, or Oladipo, or, I don't know if they'll ask for Tyler for Oladipo. They might because he's a free agent, so I'm not sure. But like a Zach Levine, or if we were if we were even trying to get a Bradley Beal, I know that's not going to happen now. Tyler would be the first piece that they ask for, no doubt about it. Um, but yeah, I think this is where I'm going to cut the video. It's actually this has been a pretty long one actually. Um, I hope you guys. You know enjoy this one please let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are about the heat you know I'm, I'm i was really i was really heated yesterday i couldn't believe what i was watching in the game it was um it, it, it was just terrible man it was absolutely terrible but it is what it is hopefully we bounce back we gotta win these next four we gotta win these next four um we'll see what happens man I'll see y'all later. Make sure, as usual, you leave and leave a like and subscribe. We're three, we're thirty away from three hundred subscribers. Please hit that subscribe button. Join the community. I really appreciate it. I'll see y'all later. Peace.